it's been a very full week for Tim and me because we created this political campaign called Returning the Nails. And I really uh, like it. I'm very excited to see what will come of this initiative. Yeah. Tim sent me this postcard, which I guess I spoke about last week, but now I've put it in a nice uh, container so I can look at both sides of it <laughs> okay. and, and store it. And he actually sent me a couple more. But the idea is, you know, so many of us are frustrated by various things in politics and, and business. Um, and this is regardless of what side you're on, by the way. It's, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're blue or red, you could start a movement where you're returning the nails to somebody. And so, so far I haven't seen any action on our GoFundMe campaign. <laughs> so I think we may have chosen the wrong vehicle. Meanwhile, we did get the, the website at least in rudimentary shape. Tim has offered to create di various drawings for people, different drawings. And so he's put a few examples together, which are on the website. Were, uh, Nancy, were you able to read the, the write-up or hear uh, Tim's and my video about it? I did hear the video about it. I thought, you know, your, re your uh, reaction was such a strong reaction to the card and the idea. I'm not surprised that that has catapulted you into an activist position. Right, it's a, it's very much a archetypal a reaction to it. It's not every day that you can come up with a symbol, and so it's a process. We're not done yet. Now, okay. just a quick question. So, um, this you you present it in the context of climate change, uh, ecological emergency, mm -hmm. or whatever people want to call it, um, and you are stating you know the malfeasance of some of the oil and gas and coal corporations and such um however um as such as that is true you know they they have known for some time and they've captured a lot of government agencies and such to um, have things their way and essentially benefit from the fact that their product has caused a lot of pollution that they didn't want to admit insofar as carbon dioxide is now actually a pollution. However, just wondering, now there's other angles or perspectives such as uh, animal agriculture. And I'm wondering if people have a perception of, of a deleterious organization that they want to send their nails to, are you making any value judgments or um, editing or censoring someone? No, because no. Uh, I could I, send nails knit to uh, the nuclear power companies too. Anybody. Right. I mean, okay. Right. And I'm saying it's for any activism. Uh, you know, Tim and I were talking about possibly making uh, activists in Hong Kong aware of the, of the strategy. Uh, and I, I didn't resist. I think it's a good idea to do something like this because it's symbolic and it allows average people to exercise out some of their frustration. You know, obviously, if the idea catches on, you could have end up with millions of people sending postcards in, right? And the reason I got interested in it especially is because I'm a member of the um, Military Officers Association, which of which I'm a life member. And so every month I get their, um, their magazine, okay, the Military Officers Association ma magazine. And very often they, they contain it within cardboard that has four postcards on it. And these four postcards are addressed to my 
Congress people, and they're individually addressed to my two senators and my congressman, and and they contain the message that the Military Officers Association wants to get into those offices. And obviously, Military Officers Association has, well, at least several hundred thousand members, if not millions of members. And so when they do that, they put the postcard right in people's hands. And all you have to do is sign it and put a stamp on it and put it in the mail. And I'm so I'm sure that congressional Congress people get uh, lots of postcards from MOA. You know, the Reserve Officers Association does the same thing. So it's a it's a lobbying technique, right? It's it's like it's like a letter writing campaign or something. It, it's not tied to any one specific movement, and it's not tied to either left or right. It's I'm sending an e, uh, you know, so the postcard could be sent to Nancy Pelosi as well as to McConnell, okay, Mitch McConnell or anybody else. And it basically says, and we're gonna carry the future with us. That's the message. I mean, that's the fundamental message. It's a pretty simple thing, uh, but it can be very powerful. And, you know, I mentioned it in my meditation group this morning where we have a number of uh, psychologists and one of these women said, wow, Skip, that's very powerful. That's what they said. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, when I received it and started to think of the implications of it, I mean, this is the, this is the postcard Tim sent me and he just put a little message to it on the, to me on the back, which you can read on the website. But he said that, you know, it's a very powerful statement. He says, it said that after Tiananmen Square massacre, the Chinese government sent bills to the families of protesters for the cost of their execution. Whether true or not, this is the cast of human evil. I'm researching early metallurgy. I discovered, or in researching early metallurgy, I discovered that in Christ's time, iron was a strategic material. I imagine if nails were used for crucifixions, the families of the victims would be charged with returning the nails to the government. This image is Mary post-crucifixion. And so the idea is that Mary is returning the nails and she's, she knows that she's the mother of God and that uh, she's in the end, she's going to win. So she's saying, here you go, here are your nails. You know, I'm gonna carry the future with me. And that's the idea. And so Tim actually has done two statuettes and they're both shown on the on the website the other one is called conviction so it's much more aggressive he talked about having a third one which was uh, returning the nails forgiveness and he had been unable to get his mind around how mary could forgive and you know he and i were had a quandary about that and I was commenting to him about this painting, which Lana did, okay? And the name of this painting is right here on my wall above my computer. And the, the name of this painting is um, The Mother of the Martyr Kept the Governor Waiting at the Peace Ceremony. That's the name of the painting. And so, you know, when when Tim talked to me about doing one with forgiveness, I was saying, wow, Tim, I cannot even imagine a mother forgiving. (laughs) But then I had a different thought. And that was that I remembered that the, and and this is all archetypal stuff, folks. So this this is all very much within the realm of Jungian psychology and, um, you know, political psychology. So that's why we're discussing it here. It occurred to me that the, um, the 
black families that lost nine people in the in the black church down in South Carolina a couple of years ago. And they insisted within a day or two of that murder, that, that mass murder to um, be presented to Dylan Roof and to tell him that they forgave him. And um, I thought that was an incredible thing at the time and I still do. And um, so, I mean, my thought, and I'm sure your thoughts would be welcome too, because uh, Tim is trying to figure out what the third statuette should look like. Uh, but my thought would be that the, the third statuette would be Mary with her palms up and the nails across her palms, just holding them up with her head bowed down. Uh, and that would be sort of a symbolic forgiveness. Um, do you have any thoughts about that, Nancy? I mean, does this mean anything? Well, I, I'm thinking from the Christian viewpoint, there's such gratitude in the heart for the love of God shown to us in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ on the cross said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. Right. And so coming from that particular perspective, I can see forgiveness coming from that source. Of course, he was asking for forgiveness from God, not from a mother. And Well, he, he was, uh, as I understood it myself, he was praying for uh, all those who had uh, brought his persecution about. Yeah. Father, yeah. forgive them. All, all our trespassers, right? All our debtors. <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, that's quite right. And, and so that's why I thought the forgiveness of this uh, South Carolina church was a tremendous example of that. And the fact that it came instantly, it didn't, you know, it didn't, I, I don't think their loved ones were even buried yet when they, when they yeah. went through that process. And so it was extremely powerful. And, you know, if that can be recognized and and so on. So, you know, I'd love to see awards given to people who have returned the nails in various ways in each of these three ways, okay? Because there's endurance. The first one, which is in the, po the postcard I showed you is called returning the nails endurance. And that's more of, you know, just a matter of fact, I'm doing it, right? But then the second one, the conviction one, is a very accusatory, jamming the nails in their face type thing, which is sort of what uh, Greta Thunberg did with the UN last summer, and or last, uh, yeah, summer. And then the third one is the idea of the forgiveness, and that could be a ward to that church and those families. Uh, but Tim has gotten uh, to be quite famous, as a matter of fact, because he has made a lot of these awards. In fact, he made a, an award for the UN for uh, the Global Peace Prize for Women was one. He made an award for uh, the Bishop Desmond Tutu uh, and he made a, an award that was given to Jimmy Carter and to uh, Andrew Young and many others. I mean, if you look at his website and look at his sculptures that he's have been given to various people in recognition of their work toward peace and so on, it's just really profound and impressive. And so I urge you to take a look at that. And if you look at that web, at the website of our movement that we're talking about, you can get a link into Tim's, Tim's studio website and see the work he's done. So There's I, a couple of thoughts that I have. Yeah, shoot. One is uh, I have an illustration, which is in a, a book from a basic Bible gospel people. And the illustration says that it's not steel spikes that held 
Jesus to the cross. It was actually love. And so in this illustration, the spikes actually look, each one looks a little like the word love coming down to a point. Ooh. And I'm also thinking of how people, and even myself included, are at times faced with making a decision that with respect to what is the ethical choice. Right. And it, it often or it will inevitably require, in a sense, some sacrifice of your own children if you have a family, or it's going to require you to make a personal sacrifice. So I think of, I think of whistleblowers, mm -hmm. who I actually think of um, the term that Arnie Gunderson uses, and he's, he's, uh, he and Maggie Gunderson run Fair Winds Energy Education. I think they're in Vermont. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is a retired nuclear engineer. He actually has <clears throat> patents regarding nuclear safety. And he had to actually take his employer once to, to task for violating for the regulations. And it cost him dearly. It cost him his job. He even had Senator John Glenn, the famous astronaut, coming to bat for him and actually saved, saved him from total destruction because the corporation was turning against him for doing what was the right thing. Right. So anyway, um, you know, these people, whatever it is, they're, they're in a sense, it's like the story of, of um, Isaac. He, he, the God intervenes before um, he's going to have his neck cut. Right. But it's all, it, it, I think it's a story about how we all, in a sense, have to, uh, sometimes we probably will cross some ethical or come to an ethical crossroads where we either do what's right or we do what's wrong. And to do what right's often a sacrifice. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it's interesting that you mentioned this because uh, Debbie has um, a daily calendar called um, Insights of the Dalai Lama. Okay. And so here's today's message that I've ripped off of her um, calendar that her mother gave her at the beginning of the year. And um, the quote here from the Dalai Lama is, I do not agree that ethics requires grounding in religious concepts of faith. Instead, I firmly believe that ethics can also emerge simply as a natural and rational response to our very humanity and our common human condition. I think that's a great one. I'll just read it again. I do not agree that ethics requires grounding in religious concepts of faith. Instead, I, fir I firmly believe that ethics can also emerge simply as a natural and rational response to our very humanity and our common human condition. Mm 